ఓ న్యూ మూవీ హ్యాస్ బీన్ రిలీజ్డ్ బై నేమ్ బహత్తర్ హురే సెవెంటీ టూ హురేస్ సెవెంటీ టూ బ్యూటిఫుల్ గర్ల్స్ హూ విల్ గివ్ యూ ఎంజాయ్మెంట్ ఇన్ జన్నత్ సో టుడే వీ విల్ ట్రై టు అండర్స్టాండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ జన్నత్ ఈజ్ దర్ ఎనీ డిస్క్రిప్షన్ అబౌట్ జన్నత్ ఇన్ ద సనాతన్ ధర్మ లిటరేచర్స్ లైక్ వేదాస్ ఉపనిషత్స్ పురాణాస్ ఎస్పెషలీ ఇన్ భగవద్గీత ఈజ్ ఇట్ జన్నత్ అండ్ స్వర్గలోక యాజ్ మెన్షన్ ఇన్ ఆర్ లిటరేచర్ ఆర్ ద సేమ్ డీటెయిల్స్ ఆఫ్ స్వర్గలోక అండ్ ద ఫెసిలిటీస్ ఇన్ స్వర్గలోక ద ఎంజాయ్మెంట్ అవైలబుల్ ఇన్ స్వర్గలోక వి విల్ ట్రై టు అండర్స్టాండ్ అండ్ we will also understand is going to swargaloka or jannat or enjoying in jannat is it the highest is that the highest or is there something more than that because in some religions it is mentioned that going to jannat getting bahattar hure bahattar means 72 uh hure means the beautiful woman who will come and give you sensual pleasure in one video i heard one of the religious preacher mentioning that you will be so much enjoying with some uh hure or i mean equivalent word could be apsaras who are full of sensual pleasures and another beautiful woman from the jannat will come and when you see that hure or that beautiful uh, apsara you will feel oh this is more beautiful than what i am enjoying with so like that the place where you will go after your death especially if you do service to god according to their understanding god will give you this bahattar hure so today we'll understand whether god has fooled you or god has really blessed you by giving bahattar hure because god is the most intelligent person most merciful person right god gives you based on what you deserve right god is the one who gives hell also that doesn't mean because god gives me hell so that is the highest no what god gives you based on what you deserve so in some religious understanding there is a concept of jannat jannat means heavenly planets where the pleasure is unlimited then you may ask what kind of pleasure what kind of happiness the pleasure of beautiful sensual women who can give you unlimited sensual pleasures especially unlimited sexual happiness and they are capable of arousing you capable of you know going on increasing your happiness in a sensual way and specifically they are called bahattar hure so here in this verse in bhagavad gita lord krishna is telling arjuna that you fight in kurukshetra war and you will go to swargaloka so even krishna is also saying you will go to swargaloka but you should know this is still the beginning of bhagavad gita it is not the end of bhagavad gita so what is this swargaloka so according to sanatan dharma vedic understanding there are three types of material world bhur bhuva swaha bhur loka bhuvar loka swarga loka but all three are inside the material world they are not spiritual they are not the ultimate planet they are actually material world only bhur loka where we are currently staying this is called bhur loka or earthly planet and then above this 
there is a better place little higher level of facilities and enjoyments material enjoyments are available they are called bhuvar loka and above bhuvar loka is something called swarga loka where we hear the king of swarga loka indra lives and what is the description of the swarga loka we will understand through this example just like if you take an example of a slum you know slum is very dirty roads are very small houses are very small what will be the room size in slum you know very small right so here only kitchen here only one hall that's all over so this earthly planet is like that slum that is a kind of happiness you can get what happiness somebody can get in slum not so much it is very low class uh, degraded enjoyment but compared to slum if you go to some middle class areas 60 40 sites okay it is not slum you have some four bedrooms and one hall and you know some small garden and uh, some uh, veranda and all that you can have so that is like bhuvar loka little better facilities not like slum but better facility so above that is swarga loka swarga loka is a palace like five star hotel in five star hotel the facilities are unlimited you have so many servants waiting to give you water they they'll come and clean your room they'll everything neat speck and clean uh, you know there are so many water bottles and anything you desire immediately it will be come and served to you so the five star there is a swimming pool right there is a receptionist you just make one call and uh, you know anything you want wa water milk and fruits and anything that you desire will be cooked and served to you see all these three things are in the material world only so our sanatan dharma vedic literature say this jannat or swarga loka swarga loka is not something great place it is better place compared to earthly planet it is a better place compared to earthly like five star hotel is definitely better place compared to a slum but five star hotel is not the ultimate goal of our life just because it has so many facilities right there are some good looking people in the reception there are some neatly dressed people to serve you to come and take care of you yes definitely it can give you more facilities that can enhance and increase your happiness far far better than slum there is no doubt about it so what is the swarga loka according to uh, vedic literature so it is elaborately described in swarga loka there are so many facilities that increases your happiness and among those like for example the houses that are built in swarga loka your residence is not some bricks and mortar and you know stone like this what we see like in slum you know what is the house you will see some ordinary ingredients they use materials they use but you go to five star hotel they use exclusive very special uh you know materials to build that right like very special tiles or marbles they use and everything so swarga loka the houses are built with gold everywhere you can see some golden palace and what kind of dress people wear it is mentioned in mahabharata one of the verses that people wear the dress and the dress material is gold the you know that uh, now what we are using is cotton very cheap and very ordinary and there they use the cl cloth material what is a cloth material golden cloth material that they they wear they shine like anything look at the facilities right and there are people called apsaras apsaras and they are all they are so beautiful their names like rambha urvashi tilottame menaka right and uh, they are so beautiful so beautiful and uh, any ordinary man who sees that he will he'll just feel that he he just can't understand how beautiful they are they're extremely beautiful and they dance in such a way that increases your happiness and you can associate with them you can have relationship with them they can give you enjoyment all that is there apsara kalurvashi ramba menaka all that is there 
right so practically there are many things which looks like going to swarga loka is the highest because there is so much of happiness there is so much of happiness including the apsaras so much happiness they can give you not one two there are so many there are many many names of the so beautiful girls right in some other religion they are called bahattar hure so like that but what does bhagavad gita say is this highest even though krishna is saying arjuna you fight in kurukshetra var and go to uh, swarga loka but same krishna what does he say in the same chapter let's hear this now krishna says yamimam pushpitam vacham pravadan yavipaschitah arjuna don't get attracted to the flowery language the talks about all the swarga apsara and all this is all meant for less intelligent people pravadanti avipaschitah pashyati means the one who is capable of seeing the truth avipaschitah means one who cannot see the ultimate truth he is foolish not intelligent so krishna says these flowery language of the vedas that talks about swarga loka apsaras rambha urvashi menaka tilottama all this you know kind of beautiful women who can come and you know arouse you they can give you sensual pleasure all that krishna says this is all meant for less intelligent people this is not highest yamimam pushpitam vacham प्रवदंति अविपश्चित वेदवादरता पार्थ नान्यदस्थीतिवादि ई सेज ओ अर्जुन बी केरफु देर आर् पीपल हु प्रमोट हु आर्ग्यू दट दिस इज द हयेस्ट एंड देर इज नथिंग बियॉन्ड दिस देर इज नथिंग बियॉन्ड बहत्तर हो रे देर इज नथिंग बियॉन्ड अप्सरा ऊर्वशी मेनका there is nothing beyond the facilities of swarga loka especially in swarga loka you will get to drink something called somarasa somarasa means it is a, so it's a very special intoxicant when you drink that special intoxicant your bodily capacity will increase like you know in the material world when you uh, you say oh i want to enjoy i want to do something sensual activities but there it has a capacity you know after some time you cannot do anything beyond a point but in swarga loka you can drink something called somarasa that will increase your bodily capacity for sensual enjoyment unlimitedly you can go on enjoying with apsaras unlimitedly so all these facilities are there and krishna says that is all meant for less intelligent people don't get attracted to that don't get attracted and there are some people they promote <clears throat> they argue that this is the highest don't listen to them krishna is only saying in bhagavad gita he only told arjuna fight in kurukshetra var and you will get swarga loka but in the same second chapter now krishna says that don't get attracted to this flowery language what do you mean by flowery language they look so beautiful flowery means they are very attractive they look very beautiful but be careful like you know how that uh, there are some um, carnivorous plants they will have some flowers and when that uh, insect looking for that uh, smell and fragrance and that nectar it goes and tries to drink and that finally get trapped there it dies there so these are like that the swarga loka apsaras somarasa facilities enjoyment all this can actually trap you in the material world only because swarga loka is finally part of the material world it is not outside of the material world it is not the spiritual place it is not the highest place it will keep you in the by by showing you so called happiness it will keep you inside the material world it is like in the jail there is some room where fridge is there ac is there some sofa set is there some better tiles are there and if somebody gets attracted to that place and say i think i will settle down here only that means you're not understanding that all those extra facilities are part of the jail the intelligence is what the intelligence is actually to go out outside of the jail and krishna says in bhagavad gita swarga loka 
and uh, all this uh, facilities of swarga loka is meant for less intelligent people this is what sanatan dharma talks about swarga loka and then krishna says who are these people who get attracted to swarga loka krishna says kamatmanah swarga para they are called kamatma lusty people those who have got so many material desires kamatma atma means person kamatma means lusty person kamatmanah swarga para swarga para means those who promote swarga jannat as the highest as the topmost goal of life such people are called swarga para and who are they kamatma lusty people who have lost their intelligence they promote swarga as the highest the apsaras the happiness with apsaras is the highest who are they kamatma kamatmanah swarga para janma karma phala pradam kriya vishesha bahulam bhogaishwarya gatim prati they say that this bhoga and aishwarya the facilities of swarga and the enjoyment in the swarga is the highest and they are kamatmanah and what does krishna say to arjuna the don't get attracted to this don't get why krishna only says o oh arjuna even though it is there in the vedas don't get attracted trigunya vishaya veda nistrai gunya bhava arjuna o oh arjuna these are all you know is is promising you material you should go beyond this you should go beyond this and then again in the ninth chapter what krishna talks about the swarga loka so again krishna says traividyamam somapa puta papa yagnair ishwa swarga gatim he says swarga gatim see again krishna talks about swarga where you drink that soma rasa what we talked about right then he says krishna se te punyam asadya surendra loka indra loka which is swarga loka he says ashnanti divyan divideva bhogan so much you will enjoy there next krishna says all these things once you enjoy there right kshine punne martya lokam vishanti but the problem with the swarga loka is once your punya is over you will again fall to this martya loka to slum you are very happy in the five star hotel oh look at my room look at my facilities look at my bed look at my room right facilities look at my servant but once your money gets over in your account you will be asked to vacate the room and you have to come back to your slum room so krishna is saying these are all not permanent this swarga loka is not permanent so then in the seventh chapter krishna says antavantu palam tesham this antavantu means temporary things anything that is temporary and you are getting attracted to the temporary things you are alpa medhasa you are less intelligent person only less intelligent people get attracted to temporary things and really intelligent people they get attracted to permanent things because according to vedic literature swarga loka is not permanent even swarga loka gets destroyed all the facilities and apsaras all that gets destroyed that is not permanent so what is permanent what is real happiness real happiness krishna says that uh, you know the real intelligent person finds happiness beyond sensual things the sensual things is not the real happiness it is something beyond your material senses atindriyam buddhi grahyam krishna says atindriyam you have to go beyond your indriyas and buddhi grahyam if you are intelligent you will understand all these things krishna says so now we have discussed what is jannat and uh, so the scripture talks about swarga loka with all these material facilities 
and we also heard the details of the swargaloka how you can drink soma rasa and how you can uh, enjoy the sensual association with apsaras beautiful apsaras and all that so he is attaining the residence and enjoying the facilities in swargaloka highest krishna says no this is not highest because you will fall down you will again take birth in the material world and it is meant for less intelligent people you not got the highest you should be very careful right now next important question is if you are seriously a devotee of god you should ask this question does supreme lord the supreme lord is called different things in different religion right the heavenly father in some religion allah in some religion or maybe in uh, some religion it is called uh, you know krishna or supreme lord does the supreme lord live in the jannat does he live in swarga or does he live somewhere else according to vedic literature bhagavad gita krishna says he does not live in swarga loka he lives in his own separate planet natad bhasayate suryo na shashanka na pavakah krishna says in 15 chapter tad dhama paramam mama mama dhama my place is paramam it is beyond all the swarga lokas because it is the highest destination it is a topmost place where god lives where the supreme god lives supreme god does not stay in swarga loka he stays in his own planet called spiritual world in swarga loka that spiritual world is called vaikuntha or goloka vrindavana so he lives there he doesn't live in uh, this uh, swarga loka where simply only material facilities are available that is not the place of the god right and then the what are the speciality of that place of uh, spiritual world the spiritual world is personally protected by god himself it never gets destroyed and krishna says in bhagavad gita once you go to spiritual world you will not come back to the slum but if you go to swarga loka you will come back you are forced to come back if you go to swarga loka what is the problem you have to again come back to this dirty material place called bhur loka or bhuvar loka swarga loka where so many problems janma mrityu jara vyadi dukha doshanu darshanam birth death disease old age all these things are there you have to you have to come back you have no other option you have no other option you have to come back but what about going to the place where god stays spiritual world and that place god says once you come there you will not return to this material world yad gatva na nivartante once you achieve that place you don't have to come to this place so this is the difference between attaining jannat attaining swarga loka and attaining the spiritual place where the supreme lord stays so we should not be very happy and uh, we should not allow some uh, people to manipulate us because in that movie some it it shows that some young people your young men are manipulated saying that you have to go and kill you have to go and shoot people you have to kill people and you can be a suicide bomber and you know it, this is all service to god and when you do this you will go to jannat now you may say are if i go and blast myself if i kill myself suicide bomber i will die what will i get then what is being promised it is said that no you will go to some jannat and you will get some bahattar hure you will uh, you know you will get so many heavenly f- pleasure facilities and all that but according to bhagavad gita even if you get that that is less intelligent because somebody is is uh, uh, manipulating you for very cheap things they are misleading you that is not the highest if they are really serious if somebody is really guiding you on the right path they should guide you on the right path that takes you to the place where god stays where god lives which is a permanent place all this heavenly planets and all this apsara and you know hure and all this is not permanent 
that is not highest so krishna says his place is highest where there is no birth death disease old age and you don't have to come to this material world right so that's very important so that is why what is highest krishna in bhagavad gita himself says that in the 14th chapter he says manchayo avyavicharena bhakti yogena sevate krishna says anybody who does this kind of a business with god what is that oh if i do seva to god if i do service to god what i will get what facilities i will get ah i will go to swargaloka oh i will get apsaras krishna calls such kind of a devotion as vebichara vebichara means prostitution that is what bhagavad gita calls such devotion as prostitution business what do you mean by business i will give you some money and you give me some pleasure that is called prostitution that is called business so krishna does not have a very good opinion about such kind of a devotion oh i will do seva to god so that i will get this kind of a facility i will get apsaras i will i will go to heaven there is some section in vedas and upanishad which is called karma kanda section karma kanda section talks about all this kind of things you do this you will go to swarga loka you will do this you will attain some heavenly pleasure you do this you will get to drink soma rasa and all these things you will you do this you will get so many apsaras krishna calls that is very condemnable he says that is very cheap that is all very lowest mam chayo avyavicharena bhakti yogena sevate he says if you want to come to me if you want to be with me God says if you want to come to me if you want to be with God you want to go to the place where God stays then you have to do avyabicharena bhakti pure bhakti where the transaction and business is not there you somebody is coming and telling you you come to temple so that one day you will get apsaras you come and do the seva to God so that you will get apsaras and you can enjoy with them krishna calls that as vyabichara bhakti and god is not very happy with that kind of bhakti so you should be very careful if somebody is promising you that and asking you to go out and fight and kill yourself and kill others so that you will get that bahatar uh, hore and you will go to some jannat and you will enjoy some beautiful women you should know that is very very low level reward you are getting very low level reward it is god is not happy with that kind of a reward god is saying why are you less intelligent become intelligent and if you are intelligent what you will do you will do pure devotion shuddha bhakti you will do and what is shuddha bhakti shuddha bhakti is what gives happiness to krishna which is free from any expectation from our side shrimad bhagavatam says that what should be the pure bhakti the pure bhakti should be free from any material motivation and material impediments ahaituki apratihata there should be no material motivation oh now i am getting this much enjoyment in this world if i go to heaven i will get so much enjoyment in the heaven so that is my motivation to do seva to god seva to supreme lord then it is not pure bhakti your bhakti is contaminated with your motivation material motivation the pure bhakti should be no more material motivation then what should be your motivation your only motivation to do your bhakti to do seva is that if i do this god is happy that's all that is called love if i do this god is happy whether i am happy what i will get in return whether i will get uh, 72 hore or whether i'll get uh, accommodation in swargaloka or i will get some somarasa if this is your motivation then it is very contaminated devotion if your motivation is whether like prahlad maharaj says even if i go to hell it doesn't matter i want to do the seva to krishna like in brihad bhagavatamrita sanatan goswami mentions from narad purana that when krishna got headache and no doctor was able to you know remove his headache uh, then uh, they asked krishna only what can 
eradicate your headache krishna said if uh, my devotees dust lotus feet dust is applied on my head then my headache will go off then uh, you know narad muni goes everywhere and ask who can give the dust of the feet everybody is scared are how can we give our dust to krishna it is an offense aparad we will go to hell then finally when uh, the gopis of vrindavan when the gopis of vrindavan comes to know krishna is having headache they immediately feel so much pain in their heart and they say what should we do to remove that headache say you should give your uh, dust your feet dust and if you apply that to krishna's forehead the headache will go off then immediately the gopis started giving their uh, dust take our uh, feet dust and go and apply to krishna then narad muni asked don't you know it is such a horrible thing if you give your feet dust you will go to hell they said doesn't matter let us rot in the hell let us suffer in the hell krishna should be happy krishna should not have any suffering this is pure devotion krishna talks in bhagavad gita mam chayo avyabichar the gopis are not thinking oh no 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 yeah yeah correct correct we will miss bahatar hore we will uh, miss all the facilities in uh, jannat we will uh, lose all the swargaloka happiness correct correct le. krishna let him have a dick we will we should go to jannat no they say let us go to have a hell let us suffer in the hell doesn't matter god should be happy and that is the pure devotion and that's what bhagavad gita even though in the beginning krishna only told arjuna fight and you'll go to swarga but now krishna slowly takes arjuna educates arjuna that swarga loka is not highest become intelligent and if you become intelligent you will do pure devotion and if you do pure devotion you'll go to the place where supreme lord stays and with what attitude you stay in the in the uh, swargaloka krishna says you know the lord brahma says in brahma samhita ananda chinmaya rasatmataya manassu yapraninam pratiphalan smaratam upetya leela yitena bhuvanani jayatya jasram govindamadi purusham tamaham bhajami so in the spiritual world ananda chinmaya rasa your happiness is mixed with filled with knowledge and intelligence not some ignorant happiness that i am enjoying with apsaras yes that is also ananda by there is no intelligence there what is those apsaras they will all die one day everything will be finished one day right ananda chinmaya rasa this rasa that that enjoyment is mixed with two things ananda and chinmaya chit means knowledge intelligence so this happiness is with knowledge with intelligence when you stay with god when you stay with golo goloka govinda with govinda when you stay it is ananda chinmaya rasatmataya manassu your manas your mind your emotions are filled with ananda chinmaya rasa yapraninan pratiphalan in every body is reflecting the same attitude what is that uh, mood ananda chinmaya mood right how leelayitena leela simply by participating with god in his activities in the spiritual world and that is upetya bhuvanani this bhuva bhuva means this material world this is transcending it is far far beyond the imagination of this material world happiness again material world includes swarga loka jannat is part of material world as per vedic literature so the happiness ananda chinmaya rasa that you enjoy with govinda in spiritual world it is far far beyond this swarga loka and mahabharata says what does mahabharata says about swarga loka it says apariyaptam tatha swargam swarga is apariyaptam paryapta means sufficient apariyaptam means it is not sufficient actually the ha- happiness in the swarga loka it is apariyaptam it is insufficient yes mahabharata agrees that there are so many facilities 
in the swargaloka definitely there are many facilities to uh, increase your happiness like apsara somarasa golden palace golden dress you wear all that is there mahabharata says all that right but even after all that you will not be satisfied even after getting all that you will be dissatisfied because it is apariyaptam soul cannot be satisfied in swargaloka in jannat with bahattar hure and all that bahattar hures can never ever give satisfaction to the soul atma yenatma suprasidati shrimad bhagavatam says the only way the soul can completely be satisfied is by doing loving devotional service shuddha bhakti to supreme lord without any material motivation dharma svanushtita pumsa vishvak sena katha suya na utpadaye yadiratim shramaye vahi kevalam shrimad bhagavatam says be very careful don't get misled because the dharma the religion that you practice should finally give you what love attraction love for god if that is not what being promised if something else is being promised swargaloka you will go somarasa you will drink with apsaras you will sing and dance you know in many movies we have seen that when they show swargaloka the indra will be sitting and what will be doing in indra loka he'll be sitting and they'll be drinking some uh, heavenly alcohol called somarasa and he'll be watching some uh, beautiful apsaras damsels dancing so shrimad bhagavatam says you should be very careful don't be misled by all those things krishna says he should reject all that what does he say yami mam pushpitam vacham pravedanti avipaschitah it is all for less intelligent people just like how you show chocolate to children before you kidnap them because child is less intelligent it cannot understand like that this so called facilities of swargaloka is meant for ch- child like people who do not understand there is something beyond ist and all these things right so shrimad bhagavatam says the real dharma dharma svanushtita anushtita means practice when you practice dharma what should be the result what is the benefit you should get dharma svanushtita pumsan vishvaksena kata suyaj when you do any religion practice when you follow any religion when you practice any religion the result of that religion should be rati rati means love for vishvaksena supreme lord if that love if you are not developing but you are developing attraction to jannat and uh, you know apsara and all then shrama eva hi kelam you have wasted your time and energy in the so called religion you not got anything you have wasted your you are wasted your time and energy and shrimad bhagavatam says dharma projita kaitavotra parama nirmatsaranam satam reject all those religions which promise this kind of cheap things swarga apsara alcohol so much sex enjoyment in the heavenly planet so many women will beautiful women will come and arouse you sensually they give you happiness shrimad bhagavatam says reject such religion because such religions are cheating religions because they are not going to give you the real satisfaction that is required for the soul and the real satisfaction comes when you do unmotivated uncompromised any selfish desire material desire are not there in such devotion only goal will be how to make supreme god happy see why we are discussing all these things it is so unfortunate in some religions there are many young people are manipulated by telling them why should they fight why should they go and kill others why should they go and uh, you know become a suicide bombers why should they blast themselves because they will say you will go to some place which is called heavenly place and there will be beautiful women they will come and give you all this happiness is this the highest you see how all around the world you keep hearing this news 
suicide bombers suddenly on the main road one person will come and blast himself and kill 100 200 people or they'll come with some gun and start shooting people so in this movie called bahatter hure you will see there are some two characters and who have been promised such things that you go and kill others and you will attain some heavenly planet and you will enjoy and after the death they are searching where are those uh, hurays where are those uh, you know apsaras who they are not visible they are not coming and uh, visible so it's so unfortunate for such thing they died for such thing not only they died and they killed others also so we have to be very careful is that the ultimate goal of dharma is that the ultimate uh, you know purpose of any religion no even arjuna in bhagavad gita was told to go ahead and fight but before that fight we should be very careful and notice that how many attempts were made to avoid the war how many peace proposals were given to stop the war isn't it all the available options were exhausted to stop the war and even then arjuna did not kill innocent people in the name of religion the kurukshetra war did not kill innocent people the difference between the real religion war and what is going on today we need to understand in the kurukshetra you see war you see violence arjuna killing people but who are they they are atataina they are aggressors they are not innocent people arjuna did not go and kill kauravas because there were they were uh, not agreeing to arjuna's belief system today what is happening some people who belong to some religion they come and they either kill you or they fight with you because you don't agree to their belief system just because i don't agree to your belief system i don't agree to your idea of god i don't agree to your rituals i don't agree to your lifestyle you have your own belief system and if i don't agree to your belief system they think these people are offenders they should be killed this is not the uh, reason why kurukshetra war was going on arjuna or pandavas they were not fighting because so other people were not agreeing to the belief system the fight was because the other party was aggressors atataina what you mean by aggressor aggressor means when i start coming and interfering with your personal life like the uh, trying to kidnap your wife this kauravas they were trying to take away draupadi they were trying to rape her in the public they are trying to disrobe her to remove her clothes in the public such people are called aggressors and aggressors are those who forcefully and unlawfully take away your property like even after 12 years of agreement according to the old agreement the kauravas were supposed to return the <coughs> astinapura or indraprastha kingdom but the kauravas are not returning to pandavas so they are aggressors this is kurukshetra war is not meant to kill innocent people because they did not agree to belief system of pandavas like today what people some religious people come they say oh you are not agreeing to my belief system i will kill you no do we, we always seen in the sanatan dharma there were people like charvaka who was an atheist was he killed just because he did not agree to worship god he did not uh, agree to follow what you are following no he is given a status of a sage and he happily lived nobody went and fought with him killed him attacked him beat him no nobody did all those things he was allowed to live with his belief system just for sake of you know disagreeing with somebody's belief system nobody was killed in sanatan dharma sanatan dharma is very very accommodative it it respects everybody's choice yes today you may not be able to agree maximum i will debate with you i will argue i will debate we'll try to clarify i'll try to persuade but i will never try to kill you i will never try to shoot you i will never try to cut your throat or i'll never try to behead you or i'll never try to you know blast one's bomb and try to kill you this is not the approach of sanatan dharma and especially sanatan dharma will never tell you kill all these people and you will go to swarga loka no swarga loka is first of all for less intelligent people 
ఇట్ ఇస్ ఫార్ అంతవంతు ఫలాం తేషం ఎద్ భవతి అల్ప మేధస మేధస మీన్స్ ఇంటెలిజెంట్ అల్ప మేధస మీన్స్ లెస్ ఇంటెలిజెంట్ ఓన్లీ లెస్ ఇంటెలిజెంట్ పీపుల్ గెట్ అట్రాక్టెడ్ టు దిస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ స్వర్గలోక విచ్ ఇస్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ మెటీరియల్ వరల్డ్ అండ్ దిస్ మెటీరియల్ వరల్డ్ ఇస్ వెదర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఫైవ్ స్టార్ హోటల్ ఆర్ స్లమ్ at the end of the day it is material world so one should not be interested in going to such place and be careful it doesn't matter which religion whether that religion this religion whether in sanatan dharma whichever dharma it is you should be intelligent krishna says in bhagavad gita what does he say mai arpita mano buddhi use your mana and buddhi never give up your buddhi because there will be so many people they will manipulate you right they will come and show you something and they'll ask you do this you'll get that benefit you'll get this benefit and they will try to take advantage of you they will misguide you they will mislead you and they will put you into horrible situation doesn't matter which religion in every religion there are people to misguide so krishna says one should be intelligent and he ask arjuna to become intelligent he ask arjuna to become intelligent and with that intelligence he should follow dharma not blindly not foolishly so when you become intelligent you will understand that pure devotion without any business expectation without any material expectation simply for out of love for sake of satisfaction to krishna when you do that is the highest going to god out of love and being there with god out of love is the highest so that is what we need to understand otherwise people can come and manipulate us they can cheat us by promising all this bahatar hure and jannat and you know unlimited alcohol unlimited uh, sensual pleasure this is according to bhagavad gita is for less intelligent people and you are getting cheated because in any religion the highest is going to god and being with god without any business expectation and doing pure bhakti simply out of love no expectation if anybody is expecting anything from god then it becomes business so that is what shrimad bhagavatam teaches so we'll stop here grantara shrimad bhagavad gita ki jagat guru shri la prabhupada ki jai